Welcome everyone. I'm Meg Olberding, Director of Public Relations for CHPW, and uh, so glad you all could join us on this. Hopefully it's sunny where you are. It's probably getting pretty hot, um, but I'm happy to turn it over to Leanne to start us off. All right. Well, welcome everyone and good morning. Uh, I'm Leanne Burge. I'm the CEO of Community Health Plan of Washington and Community Health Network of Washington, and I'm very happy uh, to be in the second year that we're doing this event, and it's just such a, a wonderful um, opportunity to give our thanks to those of you in the community that are really making a difference for um, your communities and our members. So on behalf of Community Health Plan of Washington, I want to welcome you, and I want to thank you for taking time out of your very busy schedules to be here today. Um, before we begin, I'd like to introduce Melissa Stevens. Uh, Melissa oversees our community engagement work and uh, including our outreach staff who are working in the communities that you serve and she will provide a land acknowledgement. Thank you, Melissa. Thank you. Today we are meeting from various locations across Washington and other states and as we gather we acknowledge that we are all on the traditional lands of hundreds of indigenous people. CHPW is headquartered on the traditional territories of the Coast Salish people, specifically the Duwamish tribe, who are still fighting for federal recognition. As CHPW is focused on advancing health equity and achieving whole person care today and all days, we must not forget that there is no equity without tribal sovereignty. We also acknowledge that treaties were signed under duress and every treaty includes the promise of healthcare, which raises our work from service to responsibility. The colonization, attempted genocide, and extreme land theft of indigenous, excuse me, indigenous populations has a direct tie to the historical trauma and health disparities experienced by indigenous communities. Indigenous tribes are an amazing example of the power of community. Through the historical attempts of erasure, indigenous people still strongly exist. Their presence is embedded in our everyday communities. As the original stewards of the land, they continue to fight for clean air and water, for abundant fisheries and food supplies for all people. CHPW is committed to supporting the Indian healthcare delivery system that has existed since time immemorial. Thank you. Thank you, Melissa. Um, again, I'm, I'm really happy to have you join us all uh, for a celebration of the power of community and a virtual acknowledgement of our shared work in advancing health equity. While CHPW and its parent organization, Community Health Network of Washington, have supported community-based organizations since our founding in 1992, this is the second year for us to provide grants specifically to advance health equity with organizations such as yours, from what is now called the Community Health Plan Community Health Equity Fund. And for those of you who may not know, um, our mission is grounded in advancing equity. We were founded in 1992 by a network of 20 community and migrant health centers in the state of Washington to help provide access to quality care and advocate for people who are not being served by traditional insurance companies. So that's where we come from and that's who we are. Um, this included all the communities of color, immigrants, refugees, as well as native and tribal communities who continue to feel the impact of an inequitable health and economic system. At CHPW, we work to identify and address health disparities and inequities surrounding access to and delivery of healthcare for individuals. We also recognize the social determinants of health and all of the many other factors, including racism, discrimination that impact people's health and well being. We know that these disparities play out day to day, and we really saw the impact of this during the COVID crisis. I think we all have seen the statistics. According to the Washington Dem Department of Health, Hispanic populations experience COVID deaths rates six times higher than white populations, while those who identified as Black experience rates two and a half times higher than white populations. 
This was noted over the course of the pandemic and it compounded the systemic inequities that people of color regularly experience in health outcomes. As our country and our state work to increase the number of COVID vaccinated individuals, there is an acknowledgement of what we've known all along, that people trust community-based organizations that reflect who they are, their identities, their communities. And they trust those doing the work in the community year round, not just when there's a crisis. And it's abundantly clear that mainstream healthcare institutions have a long way to go to earn the trust of those who have been most uh, impacted negatively over the years. And you are the ones who have been on the front lines fighting for their health, their rights, and their dignity. So we need you to continue your critical work. And that's why we are supporting you with these funds today and with our commitment to ongoing partnership with you because we have a long way to go. And addressing systemic inequities is a collaborative effort. We must join together to harness the power of community in order to truly advance the cause. You may have noticed the power of community is our tagline. Um, for us, it's, it's a deeply meaningful tagline that encapsulates how we think of our work, how we are present for one another, support one another, whether it's our members, our providers, and our community partners. Power of community to us means that we are integrated and part of our community. The 20 community health centers across Washington who founded CHPW and CHNW believe that every person, every individual is deeply deserving of their best whole health. They came together as a community of care providers to ensure access to quality health care for all. And when we say our tribal land acknowledgement, we summon the power of community to remind us that we are stewards of the land and indigenous peoples who are here before us and for the future generations. And we recognize that we have a moral obligation to recognize their sovereignty and to change the healthcare system so that it works for all communities. Power of community for us also means that our 550 staff are also part of the communities we serve. We live here, our kids go to school here, we belong to community institutions, and we have the responsibility to do our part to support our communities, both at work and in our personal lives. The power of community means that we are better together than we can ever be alone. We learn from one another, we build relationships together so that we can be in service to one another and as we build a more just and equitable world. Ubuntu. In the early days of, of post Apartheid South Africa. President Nelson Mandela named Archbishop Desmond Tutu to lead the South Africa's Truth and Reconciliation Commission. He took an unprecedented approach to moving an entire nation forward through restorative justice and reconciliation between former oppressors and the people that they oppressed. Bishop Tutu centered much of his healing work on the philosophy characterized by Ubuntu, humanity realized through relationships. This South African word Ubuntu has roots in humanist African philosophy where the idea of community is one of the building blocks of society. Roughly translated, it means I am because you are. So now we'd like to share a short video of Bishop T Desmond Tutu explaining a bit more about Ubuntu. Let me tell you, we, we have something in, in our African uh, community something that is very difficult to put into English. It is, it is called Ubuntu. Ubuntu. Ubuntu is the essence of being human. And it says, 
a solitary human being is a contradiction in terms. I can't be a human being on my lonesome. I wouldn't know how to speak as a human being. I wouldn't know how to think as a human being. I wouldn't know how to walk as a human being. I have to learn from other human beings how to be human. And so Ubuntu, Ubuntu says, my humanity is bound up in yours. I am only because you are. And, and we, we then say, a person is a person through other persons. And that we, we, we need this communal harmony <coughs> if we are going to survive at all. And anger and revenge and bitterness are corrosive of this harmony. And, and you, 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 you know it, you've, you've experienced how now my dog is barking too so i apologize um i i really appreciated that video i did we like to watch it a lot longer but as as we work together as a community we we can't do our work to help bridge the divide for so many BIPOC communities, unless we recognize that we are inextricably tied together as a community. And Ubuntu is deeply powerful concept that characterizes the work that we have all in front of us together. Now we're gonna wait for my dog to stop on. Okay. We must not only see one another's humanity, we must see our responsibility to pursue everyone's humanity as a right in every aspect of our society. And that's what we hope to do together, to be present and participate in fostering humanity in healthcare in its broadest meaning. And that includes addressing social determinants of health, social, environmental, physical, emotional factors, economic factors, political factors, and challenging the systems in housing, education, government, business that are keeping too many people, <laughs> too many people from experiencing full well-being and their full humanity. So without the organizations like the 25 that we're honoring today, we could not as a community address all the factors that contribute to the whole and complete well-being of the diverse people in these communities. And that's why we are here today to recognize the work that you are all doing. And I'd like to share the names of these 25 organizations who are each receiving a $10,000 contribution from CHPW today. So are we able to share those names? Hold on, there's some technical difficulties in the back end. Well, that's the way it goes around here. And by the way, if we were all in person, we'd be able to have some standing ovations and really appreciate every, every organization that we're honoring today. Would you like me to continue while you're working that through? Or you have the names? Ah, oh, there we are, great. Great, so let's take a few minutes. I'm not going to read them all, but um, it's there for everyone to see. And then we will have a few speakers from some of these organizations that I'm very interested in hearing from. Here we all are. OK, 
Okay, as we leave that up on the screen, I will um, uh, continue. And um, I'd like to introduce uh, four amazing leaders who are here today to talk about their organizations. And I'm going to first introduce uh, Diana Avalos uh, Leos, who is the executive director of the Clark County Latino Youth Conference. Thank you so much, Leanne, for that introduction. And thank you so much for um, your presentation this morning. I, I'm, I'm so incredibly moved and so incredibly honored um, to be uh, uh, on behalf of the Clark County Latino Youth Leadership Conference to be uh, recognized and also to receive a, 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 an investment uh, from um, CHPW to help um, continue our work. Um, our work, uh, I'm gonna share my screen for, uh, share my screen, here we go. Um, I'm hoping everyone can see this. A um, couple of pictures uh, that um, capture a, a little bit of the spirit of the work that we do and the lives that we impact and our partnerships that we have in the community. Our organization started very grass, was a very grassroots organiz, organization or movement, excuse me, 10 years ago with um, very thoughtful partners with, from K-12 systems, law enforcement and city government. Um, back um, 10 years ago, when we were going as a, uh, as a country, we were going through a recession and, and we had to think about how are we supporting um, uh, students of color to gain access to post-secondary and technical careers. And that's how, that's how our organization started. And over the years, our organization grew from an annual um, youth leadership event at the Clark College campus to um, mentoring programs, um, summer school opportunity, summer, summer enrichment opportunities. Let me say, let me restate that. And our partnerships throughout the region grew. Um, we started in Clark County, and now we have a reach into uh, Cowlitz and uh, a light touch into uh, the Gorge and um, into the Portland metropolitan region as well. Um, when the pandemic, um, when we were all faced with the pandemic, um, we were, we, we had to think very quickly in terms of what is our space and how are we gonna serve our communities of color in Southwest Washington, especially our Latino communities. We did this work in, uh, in partnership with um, other organizations in Southwest Washington that like to recognize uh, the local chapter of the NAACP, uh, Latino Community uh, Resource Group, and uh, LULAC. Um, and uh, we came together um, as a small coalition to address the um, disparities and the challenges our, our BIPOC communities were facing um, during the height of the pandemic and how are we going to serve our communities best? Well, we also recognize now that we are on the other side of the pandemic, um, there's still a lot of need and there's still a lot of support to provide recovery for our communities. In our current work, um, we um, have um, um, we have invested um, some of our um, we have we made an investment into youth behavioral um, services and needs. Um, on the call with me um, this morning is one of our interns, um, Alma, who leads um, our work along with three other interns to address youth behavioral needs in Southwest Washington for our Latin, Latinx youth. Also on the call is Rose Mendoza, who is our program coordinator and uh, my right hand. I also see her as a program administrator um, that supports the work alongside the, the youth. We see it as our responsibility to, uh, to address systemic inequities and more so that were heightened, heightened, heightened during the pandemic. Um, our commitment is to continue to invest um, into our interns, into our youth, help them achieve um, uh, opportunities, help them develop their leadership um, skill set, and, and continue to support um, their, their path in whichever direction they, they seek to, um, to pursue. So the, the additional funding that we received today from CHPW um, we are going to reinvest that money back into our interns 
um, our current interns, and and we also have a commitment to invest in finding um, other interns to support our work in Southwest Washington and beyond. So again, thank you so much for the opportunity um, to speak, uh, and I'm very honored to be part of this cohort that's receiving a, a funding um, from uh, CHPW. Thank you again. Thank you, Diane. I really appreciate all the work that you and your organization is doing. Um, next, I'd like to welcome Joe Alonzo, who is the Chief Executive Officer of the Cocoon House in Snohomish County. Hello, friends. I am, as she said, Joe Alonzo, CEO of Cocoon House, and I use he, him pronouns. Um, I'd first like to start by thanking Community Health Plan of Washington for this amazing support. As Diana mentioned, um, we, we're all in this together to build equitable communities. It takes hard work, determination, and drive, and I'm just an honor to be here uh, amongst 25 organizations all doing this incredible work. Uh, Cocoon House, we operate in Snohomish County. We've been uh, in existence for 30 years and uh, we do the, we have about 100 employees that uh, work with young people who are at risk of homelessness or experiencing homelessness, primarily between the ages of 12 and 24 and their connected families in Snohomish County. So I am going to share my screen and give you just a bit of a, can everybody see that? Okay, good. Um, the mission of Cocoon House is to empower young people, families, and the community to break the cycle of homelessness through outreach, housing, and prevention. Those are kind of our core facets. And we really do this work through em uh, embodying our values. Values of community, equity, respect, growth, advocacy, safety, and leadership. Uh, we see in uh, homelessness disproportionately impact BIPOC and LGBT communities in, um, you know, in our community as well as around the country. And so uh, our agency operates with that truth in mind and doing everything we can to, to break that down and address um, these issues. A summary of our services, we do a ton of work, um, outreach, we have street outreach that uh, folks that go out into the community everywhere, re reaching young people who are uh, in parks and on the streets. Uh, we have drop-in, we have case management, we have housing navigation, all with the intent of getting folks stabilized. Our housing portfolio sort of includes under 18 housing options. We have shelters in Monroe and Everett, 16 short-term shelter beds for minors under 18. We have 30 long-term beds um, for youth uh, in Everett and Arlington, some for pregnant and parenting teens. And we also have a variety of uh, units for folks 18 to 24 years old in their own apartments around the Everett area. We also specialize a lot in family engagement and prevention of homelessness before it ever starts. So we do parenting classes, in-home family case management, skill building seminars, really trying to keep folks uh, together. We do this in partnership. Obviously, Cocoon House cannot do all of this work. Um, we have amazing partners that help with the physical health care, uh, chemical dependency treatment support for our youth, and the mental health support. So we do that kind of holistic wraparound approach to, to making sure we're caring for our most vulnerable in the community. The outcomes that we seek to achieve with folks, um, we want every person that we encounter to be able to advance in having safe and stable housing, having access to education, employment, health and well-being, uh, life skills development, building individual relationships and building community connections. These are the things that we feel um, will really help that young person become stable in the community and, and achieve their full potential. What this support means to Cocoon House is, uh, you know, strategically, we are continuously trying to move the needle on our equity work as an organization. Equity, diversity, and inclusion is, like I said, one of our top values. Um, we want to continue to embed and bake this, uh, this education and journey into our culture. So uh, we're providing a, a year-long uh, intensive staff training that's underway right now, and this will help support that. And also just strengthen our ability to provide the vital basic needs supports uh, for health and well-being of young people experiencing homelessness. And uh, we just are so grateful for this uh, recognition and this opportunity. Uh, and I will end it there and just say thank you again to everyone. All right, well, thank you, Joe. And I really appreciate the work that you and your organization are doing in the community. I, we all know how important Stable, a stable housing situation is as stable families are for everybody's health and well-being. So thank you. 
Um, next, I'd like to introduce um, uh, Jamila, Jamil, Jamila Coleman, who is the executive director of You Grow Girl in King County. Um, I think Jamila has uh, had a chance to, to uh, be recognized last year, and so we're happy to be able to do that again. And uh, I'm very interested in hearing Jamila speak today. Thank you. No, thank you. Happy Friday, everyone. My name is Jamila Coleman, and I am the founder and executive director of You Grow Girl, a King County-based nonprofit organization empowering young women throughout King, Pierce, and Snohomish County since 2002. On behalf of the You Grow Girl Sisterhood, I want to first share my sincerest gratitude to CHPW for your unwavering commitment to our sisters and their families over the years. I also want to thank you all for making time today for me to speak on behalf of our sisters. As a survivor who has been harmed by the education, juvenile justice, and foster care systems, I know firsthand the traumas a female identifying youth of color experiences in the system. The emotions of feeling depressed, angry, neglected, and worthless. The investments you make to our community to advance equity and provide accessible behavioral health programming is powerful. Is powerful. As a community-based organization led by a Black woman whose primary focus is inspiring Black and Brown female identifying youth to do more than survive, it is rare to have a funding partner acknowledge that they see we are doing amazing work and understand that we are struggling to meet deliverables and the needs of the community because the lack of flexible and enough resources. For you to even extend this opportunity to fuel our mission, to inspire her pathway towards sustainable success demonstrates your dedication to a population that is often overlooked, undervalued, therefore under-resourced. Our work at You Grow Girl is rooted in the deep belief that individuals from chronically under-resourced populations in Washington, especially girls of color, must be accepted for their authentic selves and supported by a community of authentic allies, accomplices, and natural supports. As part of our whole sister, whole family, comprehensive wraparound framework, You Grow Girl offers career-focused mentoring leadership development programming, and an array of community-based behavioral health services, including WISE Wraparound, all within a safe and supportive sisterhood and no cost to those we serve. Resources for us were already limited, but the need for us to expand our services to address the insufficient housing resources for homeless older youth was expressed by our sisters. Being a recipient of your investment, we have allocated these funds to support our therapeutic young adults housing program opening doors this year. Your investment will ensure that, that our homeless sisters ages 17 through 24, struggling to navigate the world, will be equipped with the essential skills for increased sustainable success in their transition from foster care and homelessness into adulthood as inspirational contributors to society. Your continuous investment in behavioral health services and under-resourced communities is contributing to a just, equitable society and healthy economy. In solidarity, we will rise. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, Jamila. Yeah, you, everybody is humbling me. They're, the work that you are doing is just so important. Thank you so very much. And finally, we have a speaker from the uh, Korean Women's Association, Mi Young Lee, who is the Director of Social Services for the Korean Women's Association, has some remarks to share with us as well. Hi, everyone. This is Mi Young Lee from Korean Women's Association. I'm going to share the screen first. And then, um, you know, uh, KWA is starting and in 1972 just a volunteer of uh, uh, several women who came from the Korea to help the Korean woman who comes with any English skill, any uh, cultural um, uh, awareness of the America uh, where to live, how to 
live and uh, how to speak with other people. A uh, mainly uh, married with the American soldier and GI, and then they have a lot of problem uh, here to adjust. Not only their uh, cultural, uh, cultural uh, or language uh, um, capability, but also the American soldier man, woman, uh, woman uh, they abuse. So the all the volunteer women they invest their their money and then buy the ticket for the woman to fly uh, from the abuse. And that's the study, 1972, and then uh, on the volunteer basis. And then we come like uh, now, it's uh, more than 55 million budget and uh, different 14 different sites. And besides the social service, there's in home care and the community health department. And then I, I am the, um, um, you know, the Department of Social Service. And then our mission statement is providing multicultural service to meet the basic human need through advocacy, education, support, and socialization. Our department is four different division and platform is shelter for better women and children. And then we are doing the elder abuse advocacy too and the community bilingual advocacy too. And then where from we build up uh, nine, um, 2004 and then seven bedroom, 19 beds. And then with the children's room, mom's room and the big um, like, a, like a playground and the vegetable garden and the fruit garden on, around there. So we are so proud of the, our shelter for the better women and children. They can stay until three months. And then after that, we are providing rapid rehousing, transitional housing and permanent housing, and then connected with the other community resources. And then this is that sometimes they call, this is a Hilton of shelter. <laughs> but the, we not only provide all the, this kind of a shelter home and, the, and then other services, we want them to be self-independent self-sufficient, so we provide uh, all the education and also support groups. So this empowerment is the one we really focus on for women. Uh, after um, the, uh, uh, besides the Wear for Home, we, uh, uh, our focus is the senior wellness too. And the senior congregation nutrition program, community living connection, senior centers. So we have uh, four different senior centers. Uh, one is King County and three is in Pierce County. And um, at the center, we are providing the, all the benefit enrollment. That is uh, rental assistant, uh, basic food uh, uh, outreach, Medicare, Medicaid, housing, energy tax relief. And also we are working for the job connection, financial education 101. And um, uh, besides that, we, uh, we have another division, American Dream, that is for the immigrant and uh, for naturalization. So we are more likely uh, 200 uh, people, we are working on it. Um, so their naturalization ceremony, uh, the uh, kids are uh, drawing the picture of this. And then um, I skipped some of the stuff, but the, when we working uh, for the senior uh, nutrition or the National Guard come and do the volunteer at the site. Isn't it cool? <laughs> and then this is a garden because of the pandemic, our senior cannot do nothing. And then we do the, um, some of the garden, vegetable garden so that the senior resident come out of the uh, apartment unit and come to the, all the, this is the, uh, vegetable uh, garden they are making and they pick it up right now. This is an old picture. And then thank you so much uh, CHPW because uh, you guys thinking about the uh, people of color and that the uh, other of the population, indigenous population, immigrant refugee. I really appreciate that. And then we're gonna uh, receive the uh, fund from you, we're gonna uh, provide uh, some PPE for the shelter and four different senior uh, centers. And also we are uh, supporting the some staff and client directly uh, so that uh, um, we can really align with the health equity. Thank you so much.
Well, thank you, Mi Young. And, uh, you know, again, I think the more we hear about the work that each of your organizations do, the more we want to know. It's, it's just so inspiring. Really, uh, what would these communities do without you? Just fantastic. Um, this has been such a pleasure to host this event and to learn more about these wonderful organizations. So uh, I, this just piques my interest to learn more from everybody and I'll be doing that. Um, it's really just a, a honor for us to be able to present this, um, this token of our appreciation. And we really see this as just the beginning that we're looking forward to um, involving others in this work and ultimately seeing results of our collaborative efforts, continue to see more results and to see, see progress uh, in our communities. So thank you all for your time today and for joining us and for partnering with us together. And we look forward to working in the future and demonstrating the power of community. So, thank you again. Thank you to you all. Thank you for being here today, everyone, and um, for all the work you do. Have a fantastic and cool weekend. Thank you. You too. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Thank you. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a great weekend. You too.